The Falk Air Education Farm is a private nonprofit. Previously, it was a nice big dairy farm. Back in 2010, the Extension Office was really interested in what on earth can we do with this property? I think our goal was to have an educational resource for growers in the community. And then we also saw that there was a need in our food banks to have fresh produce. And so we put those two together and that's what created the Falkir Education Farm. I found it uh, fascinating that um, they had a farm that was educational and yet charity based. found I was within an hour's drive of my house, so I decided to come out and see what it was about. You folks who have worked with me, you know, you know that last year we did 38,700 some pounds of donations and I've told everybody we're going to do 50,000 pounds this year and I'm really dependent on these no-till areas to help me get there. What I'm talking about with no-till is where we first establish a cover crop. We're going to grow a dense mat of vegetation. Then I'm going to roll down or kill down that cover crop so that it lays on top of the soil. I'm not taking a plow through, it's just right on top of the soil. And then I'm using some sort of means to cut through that cover crop to plant the cash crop. There's been an interest within Extension to increase the biodiversity of the microorganisms living in, in soil. I've done some experiments where I'll take a soil that's been tilled, often lighter, and, and I'll take another soil that, you know, hasn't been tilled for years and is darker and often has more moisture in it, and people immediately know which soil they would rather have. We want that soil because we know it provides the best growing conditions for the crops that we want to grow. More recently, we've certainly planted more cover crops. Um, we've tried more things, you know, trying to drill crops into a cover crop, you know, and some of those things have proven to be very challenging. This is where experience you know, really comes in. I mean, this looked really, really beautiful early on. The winter rye started to make some heads and it was nice and tall. So I thought, this is great. I can go ahead and plant this first. I came in and took the flail mower through here and planted squash in that first week of May. Then we had the deluge. Then the winter rye just came right on back up. Summer squash never even germinated. You know, it, these rows are 100 yards long. There's, you know, a couple thousand seeds that went in and I got nothing. I am learning and it is a steep learning curve. I'm gonna keep on going and we are going to, you know, get some production. This area, this was the Harry Vetch Annual Rye Crimson Clover Mix. It was just gorgeous. I can look out across here and I know that there were very, very few weeds in this field. It was nothing but Vetch Crimson Clover in the annual ryegrass. This is what the herbicide does. You know, I've created a really nice dense bed of mulch that is shading this soil. There are little weeds, nutsedge in particular, that are starting to pop up. This will be weedy, but this will also be very productive. So I've got one row of zucchinis right here, and they're coming up beautifully. We'll get thousands of pounds. We'll get a couple thousand pounds. It's nice to see that, you know, see something coming up. You know, if I had waited, I could probably have come through with the roller crimper and killed it without Roundup. You know, I want to learn how to do that, you know, but I got to do it before I know how to do it. it. It takes a little bit of time. What is compelling is the story that we tell. And that story needs to be about so much more than just production. 
It needs to be about how we're producing. Yeah. We've all done a lot of things where we've had failures. And so he tests things for us so that people who really are farming and gardening can see what's not working just to save themselves time and labor. When we stumble on something that works, and especially if it's going to produce in, in uh, quality and quantity, you know, you want to take advantage of that. Because, I mean, the mission is, the, the overall mission is, is to supply the food banks. There's the success that we have contributed tons of food to our local food banks. There's the pure financial success that a nonprofit is still up and running five years later. Um, there's the success that we've brought hundreds of folks from kids to farmers out to the farm to learn about agriculture and how their food is grown. So I think on lots of levels the farm has been has been successful. Well, they're growing in the ground right here. Yes. Cool. 